Now, friends, we're still in this section where we find God dealing in a rather harsh way with the northern kingdom, and yet in a very tender way as he is attempting to call him back to himself before judgment comes. And here in the seventh chapter, Israel turns to Egypt and Assyria instead of turning to God. And Israel, as he will say here, Ephraim is like a silly dove. And he has a few other choice metaphors for them also. And we'll look at that as we get into this seventh chapter. Now, I want to read verse 1 of chapter 7. He says, "...when I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was uncovered, and the wickedness of Samaria." For they commit falsehood, and the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoileth without. Now, this has been the first mention of Samaria, I believe. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom. At least Omri made it the capital, and then his son Ahab and Jezebel, they built a palace up there. And in our last tour... I insisted that that be put on the tour that the folk could go to that hill of Samaria and see the fulfillment of prophecy, the judgment of God upon what is probably one of the most beautiful spots in the world to have a palace or a home for that matter. It's on a hill that overlooks that entire area. You can see to the west the Mediterranean, to the east the Jordan Valley, to the south, the city of Jerusalem, to the north, Mount Hermon and Megiddo. What a choice spot, and there's nothing to obstruct the viewpoint in any direction. But today, it's a desolate waste. The judgment of God is indeed upon it. Now, what was happening in Israel was this, that the sin that had been covered is now being uncovered. That is, what they had been doing secretly, they now doing it openly. That is, there's no shame or no conviction, no conscience relative to their sin. And it's as it were, the Lord would forgive their iniquity, but they persist in it and go farther in it. And this last step, I think, is probably the worst step of all. It's one thing to sin in secret. That's bad enough. But when you attempt to bring it out and sin in the open, flaunt it before the world, then may I say to you that you've gone to the bottom. That's the reason I believe that this book has a message for our nation or any nation. This nation happened to be God's chosen people. They sinned against him, and he sent them into captivity. Now, do you believe that any other nation could get by with the same type of sinning? And this certainly is characteristic of our nation before. Now, when I grew up, the few homosexuals in our city, for I lived in Nashville, Tennessee at that time, they were undercover. I tell you, they were operated rather secretly, and they didn't come out in the open. Now, today, they're having parades. And it's being uncovered that are all across this nation today that there is not called girls, but called boys, homosexual, and that it numbers in the hundreds of thousands. Now, today, even the courts have been lenient, and the lawmakers are making it easy for them. What was done in secret is now brought out in the open, and that's characteristic of other sins. Somebody said to me some time ago, they said, well, Dr. McGee, in our day, people sin just like they do today. I said, yes, they did. I said, poor, I was saved. I said, I was with that crowd. I know. And this party says, well, what's the difference? Well, I said, I'll tell you, in my day, we kept it secret. It was kept under cover. But today, that thing is brought out in the open, and it's flaunted before the world, and it's called a new morality, and there is actually given to it sort of a halo. You are new and daring and courageous. And I heard that compliment given to a 
girl who admitted that she was living with a man she was not married to, had an illegitimate child. Well, may I say to you, perhaps I'm a square, but as somebody said in a letter the other day, the thing that we like is that you're square. It keeps you from going around in circles. Well, maybe that's it. But frankly, I must say that we're stepping downward as a nation, and this is not a mark of any advancement. It's a mark that we're losing what was called civilization, actually a Christian civilization, although I never believed it was that.